Hello, I'm Quok Dat, the creator of this math and coding channel. In this video, I'll be revealing my study techniques that helped me get straight A's through university. Before we dive in, let me clarify that this video isn't about showing off. As a student myself, I totally understand the struggles of going through university, so I'd like to share my experience with you, and I hope that it will be useful in some of your courses. As a third-year computer science student at the University of Ottawa, my cumulative GPA is almost 9.6 out of 10. During my first year, I took various courses, including maths like calculus, linear algebra, as well as introductory computing courses in Python and Java. In my second year, I took more specialized classes about algorithms, database design, as well as hardware architecture. I also took marketing because I heard it would be a bird course, but ironically, it turned out to be really tough. And now I am halfway through my third year. I actually just finished my first graduate class in artificial intelligence, which I think is my favorite course out of all of the CS courses I've taken. The first technique that I use is something I call the fail proof trick. This technique makes it impossible for you to get anything lower than an A- minus at the end of the course. So even if you get a bad grade on the exam, let's say a 68% on the exam, you still end up with an A at the end of the course. So it is a very powerful technique, and let me show you how it works. Let's say you just got your syllabus and you see that there is assignment one, which is worth 5% of your grade. Assignment two is also worth 5% of your grade. The midterm is 20%, the project is 30%, and the final exam is 40%. And you want to get an A at the end of the course. So your goal is to get at least an 85, according to the grading scale at my university. So in order to get an A+, you need to get somewhere between a 90 to 100%. And an A is what we're aiming for, so somewhere between 85 to 89. In order for this trick to work, you need to do very well at the beginning and at the middle of the course. So you're given assignment 1, and you do your best on it. You do everything they say, and you get a 95%. For assignment 2, the same thing. You work very hard and you get an 85%. For the midterm, I'll discuss how to study and do well on the midterm and exam, but let's say you get 100%. And the project, you get 95%. So what grade should you get on the final exam to get an 85% in the course? Well, let's call it X and let's calculate X. This is the way to do it. You get 5 times 95%, so 5 times 0 0.95, then 5 times 0 0.85, and 20 times 100%, or just times 1, and 30 times 95%, and plus 40 times x, and that's equal to 85. So you solve for x, and you're going to get 68.75. On the exam, you actually only need a 68.5% to get an 85 at the end of the course. The reason why I think this trick is so important is because exams can be very stressful. You spend four months working hard getting good grades on assignments, and almost half of your grade is determined by a three-hour test. And what if you're tired on that day, right? So by applying this trick, you essentially reduce the amount of risk and stress. And that's why I'm not nervous when I'm doing the exam at all, because I only need a 68.75% in order to get an A at the end of the course. So I'm pretty much guaranteed to get an A. However, if you do end up doing well on that exam, you will get an A plus at the end of the course. So how to do well on midterms and exams? It's very simple. You have to do as many practice and pass your tests as possible. So ideally, before exams, I like to do somewhere between five to six pass year exams so I can know which type of questions will be on the actual exams. 
Now, you can find these past year tests by asking your professors, your TAs, asking upper year students, or anyone in your class, because they might know someone from upper year who has the exam. Actually, sometimes I can just find the past year exam by Googling. And the important thing to note here is that these past year tests must have solutions with them. Otherwise, you don't know if you're doing the questions right or wrong. The third thing is that it's important to stay organized. So I always use a calendar. This is what my calendar looks like. And when I get the syllabus, I write down when assignment one, assignment two, midterm and the project are due. So for example, I would write here the course code and I say that assignment one is due on Monday and I would have the checkbox here so I can check it off. Same thing here. I have a quiz for this class. And the reason why you do this is number one, you don't forget that there's an assignment due or a test that is due. And number two is that you can try to finish the assignment early so you have time to revise. The fourth tip I have for you is to take summer courses. So at my university, you need four courses to be full time, but I like to take two extra courses during the summer so I can reduce the workload for the next year. Now, during the summer, you can work full time. So I work full time as a software developer for my co-op program, and I would take two courses at night. Another thing that I want to say is that whenever you do your full time semester, so you take four courses, make sure that one of the course is an easy elective. Because if you take like four mandatory courses, such as four computer science courses at the same time, it can be pretty tough. So instead, take three mandatory courses and one easy electives, such as this English class right here. And the last tip that I have for you is to never give up. So throughout university, it is very normal to become frustrated because some chapters are very difficult. And when this happens, I like to think that, oh, after the rain comes the sun. I only have one chance to do well in this course. And even though it's difficult, I'm going to do my best because afterwards it's over forever. I'm not going to retake this course. In the future, after I graduate, I want to look back at the courses that I've taken and say that I'm very proud of myself because I did the best that I could. So that's basically it, folks. These are my tips and strategies that I use throughout university. And if you have your own tips, I would love to hear them down in the description below. And with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and also subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.